Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in these times. And uh, speaking of these times, we are in <coughs> the day of the Day of Atonement, which begins sundown. Now, my time, where I'm located, is about, I think it's 7.10. All right. And um, uh, the brothers over there in, say, the Europe, they should be already in the Day of Atonement. And the brothers on the West Coast, you got about, what, maybe three or four hours, maybe about five hours before you have to start your Day of Atonement. Uh, my Day of Atonement starts in about a little more than half an hour. So I'm doing this video to remind you that uh, the scriptures speak about the Day of Atonement. This is a day where we fast. Uh, we don't eat or drink for 24 hours. Basically, we are afflicting our souls. Now, for those of you that are very new to this ministry, like Elder Pastor said, you don't have to keep the Day of Atonement because, you know, you're not really fully persuaded in your own mind. But if you have the spirit to do it, to fast for 24 hours, then, hey, all power to you. But we don't expect, say, a first year student to just go ahead and do the Day of Atonement. Now, the scriptures speak about the Day of Atonement. The so-called Jews call it the uh, Yom Kippur, okay? This is the book of Leviticus 23, and beginning at the 26th verse, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, which we're in right now, there shall be a day of atonement. Now the word atonement means healing. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls. Now how do you do that? You do that by not eating and drinking for 24 hours. That whole day, right? From sundown to night to sundown the next day. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Well, we don't do offerings anymore because Yahweh Shai did away with that law, the law of sacrifice. Okay, that was done away with in Yahweh Shai. For understanding of that, all you got to do is read the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter where it goes into it. Right now, our bodies, we offer, we offer up ourselves as a sacrifice. Let's get the book of Romans 12 and 1. It says this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, these are the words of the Apostle Paul to the Israelites in Rome, right? I beseech you, therefore, beseech means to beg, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So that's the sacrifice that we do now. We don't do animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice is done away with in Yahweh Shai. So we are the sacrifice. Now that word sacrifice, when you look it up, it literally means to make holy. Okay, I believe uh, fice uh, from sacrifice is, I think in the Italian is facere, which means to do, and sacra means holy. So to do holy or to make holy. And that is the point of a sacrifice. A sacrifice is to make something pure, make something holy. So by us afflicting our souls for the next 24 hours, we're saying to Yahweh Bashim Yashai, we're trying to make ourselves holy. We're trying to do the right thing before Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Hence the term sacrifice. 
which literally means to make holy or do holy. Uh, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. And that Day of Atonement is a, is a good example of a sacrifice, because for 24 hours you're not eating or drinking. And in, in our, um, our, what's the word I'm looking for? In our um, experience of doing the Day of Atonement many times, because we've, you know, like Elder Pastor, he's been in this truth more than 36 years and counting. I myself more than 30, so we've done the Day of Atonement many times, as you can imagine. Now, in our experience, it's usually the last few hours, the last maybe two or three hours before the Day of Atonement is to be completed. That's usually the most hardest time of the Day of Atonement, especially for those that are new. Now, for us, it's easy. We just go right through it because we're used to it. But for those that are new to this, that'll be your most trying time, the latter hours. I'd say the last two hours, maybe even three. You know, you're, you're just, your mind, especially if you're new, that's what I mean, your mind is con constantly thinking about food or drink, you know? <laughs> but for us that's been doing it for a while, we, we've, we've gone past that. And that's the, that's the benefit of experience, which the word experience literally, literally means to try out. X means out, experience means to try. So when you put it together, it means tried out. Experience tries you out, tests you out. So you can't beat experience. You know, there are those Israelites that scoff at experience. You know, like uh, uh, that dude from uh, ISUPK, which we call Meatball, when he came down to the camp, Elder Pastor told him, because he asked Elder Pastor how long, uh, how long you been, I think he asked Elder Pastor how long, how long you been in the truth, something like that, or maybe, Maybe Elder Pastor said to him, I hope I'm getting it right. Maybe Elder Pastor said to him, I've been in this thing more than more than 35 years and counting. At that time, he had said that. And Meatball said, so what did, what did that mean? What did that mean? What that means is that that man has a lot of experience in this ministry. That's what that means. But that, like I said, that, that, that's a sign of a reprobate, a guy that would scoff at, at a brother that's been in the faith many years. You've been in the faith many years and you're continuing to do what is required of you of the ministry. Along the way, you're going to garner a lot of experience. You're going to get a lot of experience. Okay? And the word experience literally means to try out. All right? So, going back to the scripture, the sacrifice is us. We are the sacrifice, which literally means to make holy. Let me read that again. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Why does it say reasonable service? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to worship Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, that's why the Apostle Paul said it's our reasonable service. And we're supposed to keep this day of atonement because it's part of our laws right it's part of our statutes our commandments it's a high holy day let's read it leviticus 23 and 27 also on the 10th day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement it shall be an holy convocation unto you and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the lord and like i said we're the offering we offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice pursuant to Romans 12 and 1. And pretty much when you uh, deny yourself food and drink for the next 24 hours, it's like going through a fire. You know, the, um, you, really you're being purified. You know, there's many benefits to fasting. All you got to do is, is Google the many benefits of fasting. There's something called a, a intermittent fasting, you know, where um, a person doesn't eat. They like eat, let's say they'll eat in the morning, uh, and then uh, they might grab something around noon, and let's say a little afternoon, um, they won't eat for the next what? For the next uh, 
18 hours or 16 hours. Okay, they call that intermittent fasting. There's different times how people do it. Okay. But the point I'm making is there's many benefits to fasting, especially for the body. The body, that's 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 one way of healing. Fasting. Okay, all you gotta do is Google it. Okay, the information is there, alright? Uh, Leviticus 23 and 28, and ye shall do no work in that same day. So if possible, you should try to get the day off, if possible. Now, those of you that might be on a job, you might be very new on the job, then obviously you don't want to get, you don't, you know, you don't want to ask for that day off. After all, you just started the job. You know, that would, that would be a bad impression. But if you've been on a job for a while, you try to get that day off. Hey, you know, truth be told, the time is coming when all these jobs are going to be done away with anyway. So at the end of the day, we're supposed to rely totally on faith of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai that we're going to get taken care of no matter what. I mean, there's plenty of scriptures we can read that that shows how Yahweh Bashim Yahshai took care of those that believed in in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Like case in point, Elijah. Elijah was fed by the ravens. He, we can read that fantastic story, all right? Which is not just a story, it's true. It actually happened. Elijah was taken care of by the ravens. Okay? So, there's, as it is written, Luke 1 and 37, there's nothing impossible for Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Nothing is, poss is, is impossible. Everything is possible with Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Okay? So, back to Leviticus 23 and 28, and ye shall do no work in that, in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your power. Okay, and it should be a day of you just uh, relaxing and meditating on the scriptures. You should be doing videos, those of you that do videos. That's a perfect day to do all kind of videos, tackle all kind of subjects, different subjects. What we do, begin with Elder Apostle Tal on down, uh, you know, myself and then Elder Apostle Rama, what we do is we go out and speak towards the latter part of the day. That way we, we end end that day doing the doing the will or doing the work of Yahweh Barshim Yahushai, which, you know, in my humble opinion, that's the best way to end the day, doing the work. So some of you brothers you might want to go out that day and prophesy the word, go out and teach the word. You know, every time you go out and you teach the word, some part of this man's kingdom crumbles. Remember, um, what is that, Isaiah 55? It says in Isaiah 55, the Lord's words does not go out void. Okay, again, it is written to give our power, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, to give them no rest until they make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. We are Jerusalem, but we're not a praise in the earth. Everybody looks down on us, everybody disrespects us. So we're supposed to be pushing this gospel, pushing this truth until Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai make us a praise in the earth. Okay, because we're the Lord's chosen people, we're the Israelites. The term Israel means he is a prince of power. Right now, our power has been revoked from us. The only power we have right now is, is the understanding of this gospel and the ability to teach it. You know, that's really it in reality. Anyway, Isaiah 55 and 11, let's read that. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. So every time you kick this word, it, it, especially when you go out in the elements and you teach it, some part of this man's kingdom crumbles. Some part of this man's kingdom crumbles because the word, the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, as long as you speak the word, which are the scriptures, the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai does not go out void. So you better believe some part of the world, some part of this man's kingdom crumbles every time we teach this word because it don't go out void. Okay, Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. This is the heavenly father speaking through the prophet Isaiah. It shall not return unto me void, meaning empty, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. There you go. Especially when we're teaching that America, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed. Every time we teach that and we go out on the street and, and, and proclaim that, some part of America, some part of this man's kingdom crumbles. Okay? That, that's just facts. All right? Getting back to Leviticus 23 
and 29 for whatsoever so it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day he shall be cut off from among his people so this is a deadly serious high holy day now, now like i said we don't expect someone who's been in the faith maybe for a year and a year you know just came into we don't expect them to keep the day of atonement okay but if they want to they, they can if they they think they can go for it but if you commit don't be you know if you make that vow and you commit don't skip out or light out on the vow let me let me show you that the heavenly father is not a power to be played with man okay when thou vowest the vow here it is right here ecclesiastes the fifth chapter the fourth verse when thou vowest a vow unto Yahweh Shai, defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Okay? So if you if you vow within your, your heart you're gonna do you're gonna try this day of atonement, well then, you know, <laughs> you should treat it as a, as serious business. You should try to complete that vow. Like I told you, and I'll tell you again from experience. The latter part of the day is usually the hardest to get through it. Usually the last two or three hours. Okay, especially the last hour. When you got you you know, when we keep it, we keep it to the very last minute, okay? We do not break it, okay, because it's a serious vow. Uh, let me keep reading. Ecclesiastes five and six. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than 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 that than that thou shouldest vow and not pay it or not pay uh, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin there you go neither say thou before the angel that it was an error wherefore should the most high be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hand so it's deadly serious deadly serious anyway back to leviticus 23 and 30 again and whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day the same soul will I destroy from among his people. But of course, you got to use common sense with that. If you just started a job, then you got to do what you got to do. But if you've been on a job for a while, you can take that day off, man. You could do that. Uh, 31st verse, ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Okay? It shall be as unto you a sabbath of rest and ye shall afflict your souls okay so you get the point let me bring out one more scripture and i'm going to wrap this video up let's get the book of uh, isaiah 58 because that kind of goes into it isaiah 58 also i should read this um how should i said when we fast we're not to appear to the world as, as fasting. Before I read Isaiah 58, let me let me get that one. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. The book of Matthew 6. Matthew 6 and 16. It says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So this is a thing you, you keep on the down low. You, you, you're really you're doing it for yourselves. You know, you, you're doing it to prove to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai uh, how much you revere Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, how much you fear the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay? Those far beyond love is fear. The Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is looking for fear. As it is written, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It didn't say the love of the Lord. It says the fear of the Lord. So we, we fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Absolutely. As it is written, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's one of the reasons why we fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Because of the great terror the Heavenly Father Yahweh can bring. After all, one of his titles is the King of Terrors. Okay? Anyway, Matthew 6 and 16, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, 
for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, and he's speaking to us, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, meaning we, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, we, we, we uh, clean ourselves. Okay, you just don't swallow the water, that's all. You can brush your teeth without swallowing the water. You can take a shower without swallowing the water. Okay, but, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So that's plain. Now let me conclude this lesson with uh, the scripture in Isaiah 58. I'm sure you how important that fast is. Isaiah 58 and 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? See? So the fast is an, an affliction for our soul. And thou takest no knowledge. You know, those, those are the Israelites that have that kind of attitude because they have no faith. Uh, behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. So there's such a, such a thing as doing the fast wrong. It, it would be a hypocritical fast. No, we do the fast and we just keep it on the download. We keep it to ourselves. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. That's, that's what it's all about. It's affliction, suffering. Remember, this is how we become purified, through suffering. Uh, Hebrews, I believe that's Hebrews 2 and 10. That's our Lord, our Lord Yahweh Shai. That's how he became purified, through suffering. You know, he suffered on the cross. Is a perfect example. Is, is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict the soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him, which represents being in a, a penitent state? Okay, this is, this is what Job did when the Heavenly Father was putting hell on Job. That's the first thing he did. He, he came before Yahweh Bashim Yahshai in a penitent state. Okay, just look up the word penitent. Literally means to feel sorrow. All right, um, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Absolutely. And and when you look at a bulrush plant, it says to bow down his head as a bulrush, which represents humility, being humble before the great power of Yahweh Shai. When you look at a bulrush plant, as a matter of fact, let me show you. The top of the plant, usually the, he the head of the top of the plant is curved. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's kind of deep, okay? Bear with me for a minute. Let's take a look at the bulrush plant. Okay, there you go. There you go. See, see how the, see how the head comes down. See, look at this one here. It's like it's, it's almost like the plant is bowing before someone, or something. Well, this is what the Lord meant. Okay, a day for a man to afflict his soul. It is to bow down his head as a bulrush. To bow down his head as a bulrush. There's, there's your example right there. Bulrush plant. All right. And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him, which back in the day that represented when you caught affliction, you came before Yahweh Hashem Yahshai in a penitent state. And that's one of the things you would do. You know, Job did that. Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Absolutely. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, this is why we do it, and to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go, go free, and that ye break every yoke. Okay? So that's pretty much it. Alright, so with that, I'll end the day. Hopefully you...
got a lot out of this lesson. Again, in a few minutes, I'll be in my Day of Atonement. Um, and I trust that uh, you brothers have a, a decent Day of Atonement. You know, what we normally do is go out and speak on that day. You know, so we will be speaking, Lord willing, we will be speaking tomorrow on that day. Okay? All right, so with that, on to the next one.